I propose now to give you some detail about the HUK. In fact, HUK is a generic name. In this product, we name it the root hardware unique key, RHUK. So I propose now to detail its properties. First, the key size is 256 bits. This one is immutable and constant, so that means there is no way to modify or to harass it. It's a random value unique pay device and provisioned by ST at production level. And the last property is that this key is not accessible thanks debugging link or even by the embedded firmware. So the question now is, how can we use it? In fact, the root hardware unique key is hardware connected to the secure RS IP thanks a physical private bus. The secure RS is an RS hardware accelerator with counter measurement against side channel attack. I will come back later about this topic in this presentation. We have a one root hardware unique key per device. An RSRS will never use directly this key to encrypt and decrypt data. It will do some key derivation from the root hardware unique key with two additional inputs, trust zone state and the key mode used by the SRS. Based on one root hardware unique key, the SRS is able to derive up to six key. Those one are named DHUK for derived hardware unique key. Now, I would like to give you details about SecureRS and how this one could be configured. The STM32 product already includes iOS crypto accelerator. And in fact, the STM32U585 includes this classical iOS. But in addition to that, it also includes a new IP the secure RS. The secure RS has been designed to be resistant to side channel attack, and I will detail those attacks in the next slide. The main side effect of this resistance is a performance decrease regarding the classical RS accelerator. A side channel attack attempts to gather information or influence the program execution of a system by measuring or exploiting indirect effect of the system or its hardware. Our secure RS is resistant to single and differential power on electromagnetic analysis and also on some differential fault analysis. Thanks to screen chain measurement, the STM32U5 is the first STMCU to achieve the PSA and CZIP certification level 3. The purpose of those certification is to give you confidence in the security level of our product. Until now, I only talk to you about the old hardware unique key. But in fact, there is an additional hardware key that could be handled by the secure RS via a dedicated private bus, the boot hardware unique key, BHUK. The boot hardware unique key is not a pre-provisioned key like the root hardware unique key. The BHUK must be generated by the embedded firmware and will be stored in the RTC backup register. So it will be part of the power backup domain. On generated and locked, by the embedded firmware, this key can't be accessed anymore directly by the software, but it can still be used thanks to secure RS. And this key is automatically erased in case of tamper event. So now we can have a complete overview of the possible key source for the secure RS. The first possible key is a key that is coming from the embedded software. The second possible source is the derived HUK, which results from a derivation from the root hardware unique key. This DHUK will be different depending on the true zone state of your MCU when you use a secure RS and the key mode that you are using. And I will detail those key modes just after. The third possibility is a boot hardware unique key I've just described you before. And finally, the fourth one is a XOR between the BHUK and the DHUK. The key mode which allows the secure RS to basically encrypt and decrypt data is a normal mode. If I come back to my innovative company example, a possible way to protect the assets for them would be to develop a firmware with this algorithm. At boot time, if it detects that the assets are in clear and flash, encrypt those assets with a secure OS configured with the DHUK and replace the clear asset by encrypted assets in the flash. This will be executed once. Then on the field, when you need to access those assets, you just need to decrypt them from the secure OS configured with the DHUK. Of course, this could be done for data, but we could also imagine to do it for some code. You store your code encrypted in the flash, you decrypt it and execute it in RAM after. This is another possibility. A cryptographic recommendation is to use one cryptographic key for one purpose. We have seen together the possible key source for the secure OS, but to extend those possibilities, 
SAOS proposed some other key modes. SecureOS has three key modes. The normal one, we already seen together, it's used to encrypt and decrypt data received from the MCU. But you've got the wrap mode. This one allows you to encrypt an application cryptographic key and also to decrypt it when needed but without exposing its value. Then you've got the share mode which allows to unwrap an encrypted application key and share this one with a classical iOS IP thanks to private bus. I will now detail the different modes. First, the normal key mode. I will go quickly because we've already seen it before. It's basically used to encrypt and decrypt data. We still have the four possibility for the key sources. In this mode, the DHUK could have two different values depending on the trust zone execution state, secure or unsecure. Let's continue with the wrap mode. In this mode, the secure OS will encrypt an application key using hardware secret key, DHUK, BHUK, or the XOR combination. The application will provide the clear key value to be wrapped. Then it will receive the encrypted value of this key. So finally, it's quite similar with normal mode, but here the key mode is different. So the derivation result, DHUK, will be different regarding the normal mode. The other difference is the case sources that are limited to the hardware secret one. SAOS is able also to unwrap a key. That means to decrypt it, but without expose its value. The application firmware will configure the secure OS in wrap mode with a proper case source, and then will provide the wrap key in the data register. Once a wrapping task is done, the key value in clear is pushed in the key register of the SRS IP, which is a write-only register from the MCU point of view. So the key value in clear is not exposed, but it can be now used by the SRS IP. As the unwrap key is now in the key register, Unbedded firmware will configure the secure OS in normal mode on the key source as a key register, and then it could encrypt or decrypt data. And in this configuration, the clear key value is never exposed. Let's see together a possible product lifecycle using the wrap key mode. First, at production level, the wrap key needs to be created. It's a kind of provisioning. Usually a random number could be used and as soon as this value is wrapped, this value could be erased. Then on the field, to encrypt or decrypt your asset, you just need to unwrap the key and then to use it. And finally, at the end of life of your product, if you want to ensure that the encrypted asset can be recovered in any manner, you just have to erase the wrapped key. But in fact, you can avoid the provisioning phase. If you unwrap a constant, this will generate a secret key that is stored in the key register and that can be used in a normal mode after. This will change slightly our product life cycle example. Now, no provision phase, obviously. And on the field, you just need to unwrap the constant to encrypt or decrypt assets. But at the end of life of your product, you can't erase this constant, so you will have to erase all the encrypted assets. Let's see now the last possible mode of the secure OS, shared key mode. It's quite similar to wrap key mode. It allows to wrap and wrap key, but in this mode, the unwrapping key result is shared with a classical OS IP, thanks to private bus. This allows the OS IP to use a wrapped key without exposing its value. Remember, the classical OS IP has not been designed to be resistant to side channel attack, but it allows better performance. So first, you will need to wrap the key in share mode. It's very similar to the wrap key mode. The only difference would be in the result of the key derivation of the root hardware unit key. Because remember, the key derivation input are the key mode, the trace zone state, and the root hardware unit key. In share mode, when you unwrap the key, the result is transmitted to the iOS IP thanks to private bus. Then the iOS IP could use the unwrap key to encrypt, decrypt data, with better performance, but with a lower level of resistance regarding some potential physical attack. So we reach now the end of this presentation. We have seen together how a protected pre-provision hardware unique key could address some security requirements. The STM32U5 integrates this hardware unique key in combination with a secure cryptographic accelerator resistant to side channel attack. 
Those mechanisms allow us to achieve the highest security level ever seen on a STM32 device, and that has been recognized by the PSA and CZIP certification level 3. Thank you for your attention.